Hi, everybody. Last time we talked about the grief process, and this time I would like to take a look at a bigger picture and how that relates to the grief process. And one of the things I wanted to say as a caveat at the beginning of all this is that you cannot force yourself into a stage of the grief work if you're not ready for it. So anything that I may have to say about this process that we're going through, um, just keep in mind that you have to do everything at your own pace. Now, the reason that I wanted to include Baloo today, there he is, is his great, great, great grand sire, I don't know how many generations back I could count, I'll have to go home and look, was Man of War. And he's just kind of a pasture pet, a very handsome pasture pet, but he's certainly no racehorse. Um, but he is part of uh, a very big picture, a broader picture. Sorry, I'm waving my camera around. That's probably annoying. And the generations that we go through are part of the broader picture of the human condition. And when we're in the middle of a trauma, it's really hard to look at the big picture because our brains are going to want to focus in on the minute details because focusing in on the minute details is part of survival. So there's some minute details about wearing masks and washing hands and being aware of where your body is in space so that you don't wind up within six feet of somebody else. So those are all important. But as we're trying to process the situation that we're in, if we can look at the big picture, then we can get our brains to relax a little bit and that's gonna help us through the grieving process. And so some things to think about in terms of the big picture is what did my parents go through and survive? What did my grandparents go through and survive? And I was thinking about my grandparents were 10, 11, during the time of the 1918 <coughs> pandemic. Oh my goodness, he scared me. There's my headless horse. Can we see your head? There we go. And I, I was wondering what that was like for them and how that shaped them. I certainly know that the Great Depression shaped them significantly. Blue, I think you're making a lot of noise. Yes. Say hello. And then what did our parents go through that shaped them significantly? Um, they may or may not remember World War II and rationing. They may remember the Vietnam War. They may remember um, Martin Luther King, Kennedy assassination. Um, our nation has been through a lot of traumas and this one is different, but I think if we can step back and look at the bigger picture, we can know that as a nation, we have been able to pick ourselves up and move on from these traumas. There are many things that we have lost since this all started, um, interacting with our workmates, income, job security. Um, we're all fearing for our health in ways that maybe we never have before. And that's not nothing, that's all significant. And I'm not trying to say it's not, um, I'm just trying to say, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you feel like you're stuck and you've kind of hit the wall, it might be helpful to step back and look at the bigger picture and what family members have gone through and survived, what we as a nation have gone through and survived and trust that we as a nation will also come out the other side of this one and that it is very dark now and a little bleak moving forward because we don't really know when all of this is going to end and get back to quote unquote normal. But there is a light at the other end of the tunnel. And when we're in the midst of a trauma, it's hard to remember that. And so that's why I wanted to have Baloo with me today and talk about generations and how the generations continue. Um, human relationship with horses has gone on for thousands and thousands of years and that relationship continues and um, your relationship with your pets continues. 
So there are some good things happening right now that are part of the bigger picture. And if you can, try to focus on those. All right, take care. Bye.